All right, here's a, uh, a uh, compromise on the uh, legitimate Hold'em stack that is still entertaining and using cards that a layman can keep track of, you know, jacks, queens, kings, and aces, that still is not, uh, still is a viable hand uh, course of play for a real Hold'em game with some real Texas Hold'em players. Now, uh, at least it's far sounder than the previous stack with the with the full uh, court cards. Because the court cards are a way to go with, with the lay audience. They can keep track of them very easily. and uh, But you can still explain some of the thinking behind uh, what why these hands would work. And plus, the really good thing in this version is that it really sucks the audience into believing they're getting, you know, getting the inside story how the scam works. And they are, to an extent. But so it comes as a really strong surprise at the end. So you talk about uh, you're going to stack four hands of poker for Texas Hold'em, jacks, queens, kings, and aces. But it's not going to be the way you might think. You might think you would stack the suckers to get the jacks, queens, and kings, and then the, the cheater gets the aces. But there is a way to win with the lowest hand, okay? And you explain that to them. So what you're going to do is give the suckers the three top hands, the aces, the kings, and the queens, all right? And you're going to keep, you're going to win with the lowest hand possible, okay? The pair of jacks, or so they think, okay? So it's very strong, and, and as, as it develops, they'll, they'll follow along fine. So the rest of it is the same. You uh, cut these into the, into the pack, and you give your shuffle. Let's see if I can do this without screwing this up again. All right, one legitimate shuffle, and the damage is done. And again, you deal clearly off the top. You know, always stress that, that you're not doing, because you really want credit for stacking four, ultimately five hands in one shuffle. That's, that's the big thing. Okay, so now you explain to the audience, uh, remember, I'm going to win with the low hand, so here's the flop. And right off the bat, I've got jacks. I've got quads. This is how they're, they're seeing it, the quad jacks. That's the lowest hand. That's the strongest hand that's going to be. And the first player here, though, with the queens, now these are the first and second blinds. This is the big blind, the little blind. Since uh, Now, the person who got the aces, by the way, would come out raising. I mean, uh, before the flop, good players generally will, uh, with wired aces, they're going to raise me for the flop getting a lot of money in there, and they're trying to drive out people from drawing, trying to suck out against the, uh, the you know, the coming flop. But if someone with queens and kings, they're going to hang in there because they're the little blind and the big one. They're already invested, and these are good hands. So they're going to stay for the flop. And right off the bat, the lady with the queens, she, she sees, he, she's, <laughs> he sees he's got queens full of jacks. He's not going anywhere. Now the kings... He's the big blind. He's probably going to stay in because he's top pair. Kings uh, two pair. Kings over jacks. And on the flops, now on the turn card, it gets even better for the king player. Okay? Now, the aces, he might be starting to get a little worried here if someone's got a, a, ja a jack or a queen or a king. They got trips. and But he's the one that, even if we did lose the aces, he's the one that started out raising before the flop. So you got a lot of his money no matter what. So, and plus, a uh, big concern for these players, uh, not these players, uh, but for him would be a, uh, a flush draw that could beat him with, with aces over jacks. But these are off suit. These are uh, jack of hearts, jack of diamonds, queen of hearts, king of diamonds. There's no flush made yet. yet. Now, but, now he's got a dilemma here. On the, on the river card, the ace shows up. Now he's aces full of jacks. He's not worried about a flush anymore at all. Okay, and uh, of course you know, and, the, and, and a layman think, well, they're sitting here with, well, the jacks take all with the four uh, quad jacks. And then you hit them with, well, you know what, actually, I gave the jacks up to this sucker over here. And you explain that it's even more money in the pot. This is the guy that's been really betting up. Uh, well, actually, he's going to be slow playing it through the whole thing until it gets going. And he's going to be betting full bore at the last, uh, the last rounds. And, of course, you come in. Now, this is far more of a shock with a 10 king of hearts. And there's the royal flush. So this plays out uh, at least a little bit more logical 
that would a, a hand that would actually keep the players uh, in there longer. And I don't think you'd lose the queens and kings. Uh, the aces, of course, here, uh, you might lose them, but maybe not. And the jacks, of course, they're not going anywhere. So there you go, much more uh, conducive stack. Uh, for inter so you got best of both wor worlds, a uh, real enter uh, entertaining and easy to keep track of for layman, layman, you know, and plus you're proving very clearly you stack those cards in one shuffle, and then you also got a a, a pretty believable course of events uh, for the actual play, you know, which will hold up to some extent at least, even with uh, real hold'em players. All right, here it is.